Hi everybody, it's Agnes. I wanted to talk about those of you that suffer from anxiety and fear, okay? So there's something that you want, something you're trying to manifest, more money, a new job, travel, a specific person, okay? And you've got fear and anxiety going on when you think about how's this going to happen, when's it going to happen, and you feel this emotional stuff that's really familiar to you that you've had probably for a very long time and it's maybe uncomfortable but it is a familiar feeling, okay? Fear and anxiety, okay? So three things that can really help you with this. You've actually got to calm your emotional state down. You've got to come to the place where you're calm and at peace and your stress level comes down, okay? To manifest anything that you really want, you must do your best and we're human after all, so it's not going to be all the time, but you're really learning to calm your emotional state down, okay? So... Let's, let's imagine it like this. You're not really going from I who doesn't have what I want, the amazing job, more money, specific person, an amazing relationship, to the person that has the relationship, the money, the job, the specific person, okay? You're really going from the person who's got fear and anxiety and you're feeling emotional turbulence you're really learning to go from that person who is emotionally disturbed about it to a person who's no longer emotionally disturbed by it, okay? Abraham Hicks says all the time, this is an emotional journey. This is an emotional journey. This is an emotional journey. That's what she means, okay? You're going transiting from having fear and anxiety to someone who's more relaxed, more calm and more emotionally secure. Once you're in that state, as Neville talks about, you're changing the state. Those are Neville's words, Neville Goddard I'm referring to. Then what happens is you are much more able to manifest the thing or the person or the money or the job, whatever it is. Okay, so three things that will help you with this. Meditation, okay. Now, many of you say to me, I can't calm my mind down. That's because it takes practice, okay? The more you meditate, the more you practice, it's a skill like everything else. Can I do it perfectly every time I do it? No, even after 30 years of meditation, I still have days where my head wanders around. Doesn't matter, just do it the best you can. Let it go for that day, tomorrow could be better. And you practice this thing of calming the mind down, redirecting it, and as you do that, your emotions calm down and level out, okay? Second thing is when you are not in meditation mode where you've got time to just totally and completely go and drop, <coughs> drop into meditation, you can do your affirmations, okay? Now, affirmations are about redirecting your mind as well. You say the things you would like to be. I am something, okay? So practice I am, practice I am, I am wealthy, I am loved, I am lovable, I am traveling, I am enjoying the best life I've ever had, whatever it is, enjoy, enjoy the thoughts that go with having that thing, okay, that's how you move towards it. Now the third thing is inactivity, I've talked about inactivity before, but I am going to talk about it again because Esther in particular talks about the art of allowing, okay? Now, she talks about this again and again and we hear her say it and sometimes we zone out. The art of allowing, the art of allowing, the art of allowing. What does it mean? It means you do your internal work and you don't do much at all on the outside until it comes into you or you do 10% inspired action if you have any, okay? So the art of allowing is you do your internal work and you live from the end if you're talking about it in Neville's terms, Neville Goddard, okay? So you surrender and allow, you surrender and allow. 
those of you that have been doing the law of attraction for some time or the teachings of Neville or any other teacher that, that talk, talks about law of attraction, this is the stuff that seems to be the hardest for people. People can do a lot of action-based things, the whispering technique, rubbing out technique, reading, listening to YouTube, whatever it is, but it is the allowing the inactivity and the surrender that seems to be the most challenging for people. But this is where the real nuggets are. This is where I find in my own life, because I was such an action figure before, that the more I learned how to just learn to allow, learn to relax, learn to be calm, learn to be at peace, learn to feel love, any other state, it's working on the state of being and then allowing the external circumstances to come to you. You get, you shore up your state. So if you're kind of, you know, every time you think about that subject that you really want, you're emotionally a mixed bag of nuts. You want to learn to become shored up the actual state. Shore it up so that you feel more the thoughts. It starts with the thoughts, then it's the feeling, because the feeling comes from what you think, okay, to make it a bit more simple. And you really have to calm the anxiety and the fear down and believe in the state. Believe in I am wealthy, believe in I am loved. So you're going not from you without the thing you want to you with the thing you want. You're really going from you who's got anxiety and fear to you who's peaceful and calm when you think about that subject. So see, that's what the whole thing about it being an emotional journey is. And she talks about it again and again. And that's what it means. The more you work on that stuff, your manifestations come in. And that's exactly what's happened in my own life. The more I've balanced out emotionally, the more I meditate every day, the more I do my affirmations, the more I allow and surrender. The third thing, allow and surrender. The more I would do that, the more the manifestations come in, in waves, because you're no longer in this anxiety and fear of when am I going to get this? How am I going to get this? How's it going to come? And being disturbed by not having. You are no longer in turmoil about not having you see and then the thing just comes the thing was as she says you have to get happy first well you were happy first and the emotional journey you went from being unhappy without it to slowly learning to let that go and eventually you said you know what I'll be okay without this and then you got it okay so I just wanted to break those three steps down meditation affirmations allowing and surrender okay so that's it in a nutshell. Thought I would explain it a bit better. I will put the YouTube down below about activity versus inactivity for you to revisit. For those of you that haven't seen it, you'll see it there. And that's it for today. Lots of love.